At Evans Bay, Wellington, the two-and-a-half-ton speedboat Redhead goes down the slipway for a trial run. Then Southward, her owner, is testing new propellers to raise the Australasian speed record. Evans Bay is based for Solon flying boats flying to Australia, but there's room for everybody. Revving up his 1450 horsepower engine, Southward lines up with the flying boat and goes faster than the Solon at takeoff. After the test, he changes his propeller for one of larger diameter but finer pitch. At the first day of dead calm, he'll try and raise his own 96 mile an hour speed record above the century mark. The day arrives and stopwatches are got ready, start and finish line sights aligned on carefully surveyed marks. There must be two timekeepers at each end of the measured mile. Redhead puts out to sea again, her owner hopeful of being the first man in New Zealand or Australia to exceed 100 miles an hour on water. He crosses the start line and sets stopwatches ticking. She crosses the finish line and timekeepers get set for the return run. For a record, runs each way over the mile are averaged. Here she comes. There's a higher note from the engine and Southwood's out to make this the day. Wash from spectators' launches has disturbed the surface of the smooth water. He crosses the finish line, out from the bay, out into the roads of Wellington Harbour. A speedboat brings data from the other end timekeepers and Southwood waits anxiously while calculations are made. Applause! Time for the two miles was 71 and a tenth. Average speed 101 and a quarter miles an hour. Aboard his son's smaller speedboat, Len Southwood, paddle in hand, pushes off for home. First man in the Australasian continent to beat the hundred on water. At Waipoa in Hokianga County stands the last Kauri forest of any size, an area recently proclaimed as a forest sanctuary, to be preserved as far as possible in its natural state. Present for a meeting of the Waipoa Advisory Committee is the Minister of Forests, the Honourable Mr. E.B. Corbett. Forty years ago, a Royal Commission recommended that we set aside 200 acres of Waipoa and allow the rest to be milled and settled. Today we are setting aside not 200 acres, but 22 and a half thousand acres as a permanent forest sanctuary. I am extremely grateful to all those good people who have assisted so much towards the preservation of this magnificent forest area. So 1200 year old Tane Mahuta and his brother Kari trees find themselves under new management, but still protected from fire and other dangers by the care of state forest service. The crown spread of Tane Mahuta is nearly 12,000 square feet. His roof, as big as the roofs of eight or ten houses. The efforts of the Forest Service to encourage regeneration of the Kari will continue in other Northland areas. On the upper reaches of the Waitemata Harbour, a Catalina of number six maritime reconnaissance squadron, RNZAF, takes off on a routine training flight. With a nucleus of regular personnel, Number 6 is a territorial unit whose members are trained in handling seaplanes on the water and in the air. Over the harbour, the crew get a good look at the scene of today's operations. They'll be down there again pretty soon. They're scheduled for ditching practice. One engine goes dead. They're on the way down. The plane touches down, and the crew already at their stations get busy preparing to abandon ship. The self-inflating rubber dinghy goes out of the blister. Canisters of food and emergency equipment are stowed aboard. Under the watchful eye of an airborne Catalina, the crew paddle away, completing the exercise. Not all their jobs are such fun and games. A lot of hard work has to be put in keeping the planes sea and airworthy. 
On the hard at Hobsonville, some of the ground staff overhaul engines and hulls, others clean up a high-speed crash lawn. They're a very sea-minded bunch of airmen at Hobsonville. This 32-foot sloop Temptress, out for a trial run before sailing for Fiji, was built by Warrant Officer Gordon Kells in his spare time. Posted to Lothala Bay, Kells decided to sail there in his own boat. The signals officer gives the radio a final once-over and the crew make shipshape for the 1,200-mile voyage. In dirty weather, provisions, a rubber dinghy, May West are taken aboard. Everything's ready for takeoff. They're off to Fiji, and even the weather term members of the Hobsonville Boating Club from turning out to give Temptress a hearty send-off. Boating at Hobsonville is in the boom, a useful tie-up with the work of a seaplane squadron. The club holds frequent races, and a special RNZAF one-class design has been evolved. 11 foot 8 long, 4 foot beam, and a total weight of 120 pounds. In light weather, they hold their own with bigger craft. In many odd corners of the station, garages, backyards and boat sheds, officers and men spend leisure hours studying plans and building their own boats. Designed by a young territorial, AC1 John Spencer, they're of kayakateer and plywood construction and cost an average of about 22 pounds each. On duty again in the ops room, the crew is being briefed for another training flight, this time a navigation exercise. According to a radio signal, the sloop Temptress is now about 500 miles northeast of New Zealand. This crew will search for the yacht, a task that calls for expert navigation. Confidence in their success is indicated as they load a canister with some assorted fresh provisions to drop to the yacht. Aboard the aircraft, instruments are checked, the navigator plots the course to the search area and other crew members relax until the job of looking for the needle in the haystack starts. After several hours flying, they reach the centre of the search area. In the blister, binoculars are focused on the glaring sea as the pilot takes the plane through a pattern of expanding sweeps. There she is surrounded by thousands of square miles of lonely sea, a tribute to the quality of the training and skill of the RNZAF. Just the fresh supplies to drop now, before turning for home. Away it goes, right in the course of the yacht. Another exercise successfully completed by number six maritime reconnaissance squadron. Thank you.